So, just at the beginning of lockdown, yeah. I got nicked painting. Right. So, they fucking had me in the cells for the night. And um, when I came out in the morning, I spoke to my boy's mum. She's like, oh, you yeah. like, oh, didn't try and ring me last night. Yesterday or whatever, I said, because I was in the fucking cells and she's laughed, laughed at me. She's like, Wait, what the fuck are you doing in, in the cells, painting? Mm. I was like, yeah, she's like, you twat. Yeah. She's like, don't worry, do you know what I mean? It'll be all good, I'll help you get your stuff back. Because they've been and raided my ass and fucking took all my shit, oh. like, all my paint. Yeah, they took fucking, it was a joke, man. Oh. Yeah, so they took everything. Um, and then, yeah, so I got out of the cells the next morning, spoke to her. Um, I fell asleep. I woke up to the phone ringing and she was dead, man. Killer Keller official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo. Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. So ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be. Um, you wouldn't want to be anywhere else, not for love nor money. Uh, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to strainstation.co.uk. Hold tight, Nolan Poland. Big shout out to all the regulars. We've got the Killer Keller, uh, ke- the Kellervision app, should I say, for all your street culture sports. It's where sport and art meets in two different, two different genres, all roll it into one. So get involved, it's free download, all right? Mixes, all that business. Yo, very, very, very excited because we have a traveller. A roaming wanderer that I happen to have found looking around in the streets of, uh, of North West London. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but ILC is most definitely in the building and I'm super excited. It's, it's, <laughs> come on, this is the crew that I've known from a minute or more. Uh, my early upbringings of uh, graffiti and the culture as a whole, man. ILC were definitely representing the whole of the UK. And one of these uh, areas and districts most definitely is held court by this gentleman, right? Beside me, your left, my right, the awesome posier inside the place. What are we saying? Did yes. I say it right? No, I did you fall. <laughs> <laughs> he done me. Yeah, Yo, we did talk about it. I was like, how'd you say your name, bruv? How'd you say your name, bruv? You can pick really, man. There's, a, there's, there's multiple. Uh, there's, there's, I, I get posier, posier, poser, posse. Um, Pose is a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't mind it though, because it's like, to be fair, when I was thinking this name up, mm. it was, it did go through my mind, and I thought I quite like that because it's like the opposite of what I am. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm for like far from a poser. Like mm. if you like today's probably the only day in like six months I've not been covered in paint, covered clothes. Do you really? know what I mean? I just live in paint. Clothes. <laughs> every, every day it's just everything I buy just ends up with paint on anyway. Well, uh, yes, uh, uh, graph writers are at peace with that. They, they are quite happy. In fact, it's part of the regalia. Isn't it of a yeah, graph? So what is it then? Posia, 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 or do you do you not mind? I, I'll answer to any. I kind of like I like to leave the mystique going on because mm-hmm. it just cracks me up, and I like to see it like when I meet people and I ask them, and then they feel all awkward and shit. I'm just like, I don't know, I get a joke from it, man. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you what it is. Is it a me- <laughs> is it a measure of a person how they how they name it? Like if it's if it's posia, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> if, if, you know, you, you know, the, the spoon's oh. deafening in the mouth with that one. Yeah, man. Someone someone recently called me a. Um, Posier. 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 That's almost sounds like, that sounds like modern art. Like, yo, that's something else. Posier. Posier. Yo, I love it. And I also, I think, like you said, adds to the mystique. Yeah, man, because that's what's missing in graph now as well. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, the, like, the, in that, like the Instagram thing, the, the, um, the social media thing is good for shit. And it's shit for shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like the mystique's dead. Like, everybody mm. knows everyone. Mm. Like, I remember being a kid. <clears throat> you see a writer's name on the wall, and you was like painting a picture. Who is yeah. this guy? Yeah. Why? Like, you just that was that was the mag part of the magic, like hundred mm. percent to the point actually. And this is something that I, I was contested because I, 
when you see paint cans on, on the ground in Hall of Fames or whatever, I mean, first of all, it's like, pick the shit up because there's loads of toys out there. They'll go and dog whatever they can with any little paint they got. For real. But also, I used to love the mystique where even, you don't even know how they did it. Let, take the cans with you, man, because when you see a piece up, it's like, yo, where did that fucking come from? How did that come from? What the fuck? Do you know what I mean? It's real. It's like, keep that almost like untouched apart from that explosion on on the, on on the surface. Yeah, man. That shit's crazy. Wow. So, where about see you residing at the moment, P? <laughs> I'm from Knott's. Not in a whole yeah. time. Big up Jack Dash as well, another bad man. Yeah, he also told me, I spoke to him last night actually, and he said, give you a yo for him. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys. He was going to call me, he nearly came this morning. But... Stop it. No, he was going to come down what, and then. D- what, road trip? Yeah, yeah. He was going to come down and I'm then, really put out by that. And then That's he was like, yo. Like, Maybe you could have killed two birds with one stone, bro. Yo, I would have just flung stone. That, <laughs> you guys are fucking... Nottingham represent, like, I've always had an affliction for Nottingham. From my ex-girlfriends right the way up. I love Knots, man. Talk, talk to me about the scene up there at the moment. Um, it's mud, to be honest. Like, um, for me, personally, the scene, um, the early scene was more where my heart is, do you know what I mean? Like, now it's, it's such a fucking divide. Early scene, what you, what era are we like talking Like, early 90s. Yeah. So, like... I feel you. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I want to go into it too much because, like, people think I'm taking shots and shit, and I'm not, do you know no, what I mean? No, no. But there's, like, there's just a big divide and they don't need to be. But I suppose most cities are like that, you know? And there's... Like, uh, let's all just paint. Mm. Well, do you think that's, dare I say it, but maybe actually a reasonable analogy. Is it crabs in a bucket to a certain extent? It's ego, isn't it? Ego. Well, but that's what graph is, ego. But, yeah. you know, it's just, I, I, I find a lot of it's unnecessary. Yeah. Um, I paint, like, now I paint to escape bullshit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it's like... Like, why don't everyone do the same? Like, let's just fucking get along and just paint mm. some shit. Yeah. Do you think... Yes, it is an escapism, isn't it? It's to relieve an area of your life. Mm. And when you get the friction in that area of life that you're using to relieve, graph's such a personable thing to people. Mm. I guess that's why people get so precious when there is beef. Yeah, yeah. I, I I tend not to get precious about stuff. Um, I, it's kind of like water off a duck's back for me mm. because, like, shit that's happened in life, in my personal life, has been so much more than bullshit. Do you know what I mean? It's right. like dealing with that, like someone's going to say stuff about people or do this or cross this, that or whatever... I mean, it's fucking, it don't yeah. bother me, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing, I don't hear oh, that. Yeah. So what, like that, the body armour of those impacts that it doesn't really pale con- in comparison to what other beef there might be in a lower level yeah. graph wall or whatever. Yeah. Real life shit we're talking today. Mm. Before we get into that, I want to know, how the hell did it all begin? When did it begin? <laughs> when did it begin for you? And and yeah, how did this transition into ILC come? Big up Pulse as well. Oh yeah, my big god! Oh my god! The pedigree's real in this crew. Talk to me about how this whole how the whole journey began for you, Pete. For me, um, well, I got into graph. I was really young. I was like eight or nine, um, and it was through my brother, because he he was. He was. He started writing. He's like five years older than me, so he was in his teens. And um, him being my older brother, I mean, he was fucking cool to me. Do you know what I mean? He's like, I want to be like that. I want to be like my brother. So, like, uh, when he was out, I'd be in his bedroom, hip hop connection. <laughs> Standard. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, and that was where the, where the graph came as well. It was like the back pages. Back pages, hip hop connection, um, yeah, monthly. Mm. Just waiting to see see the new graph in there mm. because when you're that young, you don't get to see much, you know. Other than the times where he had to like, I don't know, my mum made him like look after me for the day or whatever because yeah. she was doing shit. 
So, and he just wanted to do what he was doing. So we'd go places and I'm just tagging along. I'm just there. Yeah. Don't tell your mum. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. But I'm going to these places and this is the time I'm seeing Graf. Mm. In Knots, it was like, I grew up kind of like in a bubble graph wise because London was so far away when you're that young, yeah. do you know what I mean? It, and Hip Hop Connection actually becomes like a lifeline to yeah, exactly. other areas of the yeah. UK, yeah. And then obviously it was the the, the Bibles, you know, your subway art, yeah. which yeah. I'm sure you stole from the library or whatever, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I spray can art as well, that was yeah, another yeah, one. Spray can yeah. art, so he'd be like, oh, I'd just be study. I'd just study them books, man, for fucking hours. Yeah. I'd just sit there for hours just looking yeah. at pictures. Mm. But yeah, so you know, being being that young, we uh, we used to go out um, just tagging, really. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Like we were fucking toy as fuck, like. But mm. we was just going out tagging. Um, luckily, like where I where I grew up, we have um, <clears throat> we have the sidings, which is literally like ten minute walk from where I live. And back then, so it's mainly just freights and stuff. But back then there was, you know, there was it was like a three three wire fence. You could just put your what? Leg, yeah, you could just put your legs through and put your head under it. So when you say sidings, for those that aren't, you know, aff aff affiliated with the, the the terminology, sidings being the side of the tracks, where, where the tr yes, where the trains so pull in. You just yeah. had what just cables that you just climbed over. It wasn't even a yeah, just like literally concrete posts with you must have seen them just with like the three metal. Cables like Mate. it's just a, just more of a marking than a deterrent. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. The demarcation of that's safe, that's not. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Wow. So you know, we like I grew up down there. That's where we spent all yeah. our time, and there was a, lo um, a load of like uh, the old the old buildings there where they used to like pull the levers and shit. So obviously they used the to old get wooden kind of tall buildings, concrete, big concrete really? ones. Yeah, like all the windows ran a bit similar to like what you see at the airport. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not as big, like but. Yeah, so we used to, used to like, yeah, go there and go. I'm not saying too much about all that, like, but um, no, because we don't advocate that over here. Do not get involved in any dangerous sports. People die out there for that they shit. They do die. So oh, let's yeah. not get into it, people. We'll get into that. In but minute. yeah, for real. Uh, that time, did just the whole notion of just like, well, we will just lift up this cable and just walk straight through. How often? How often? Um, how often would you frequent in that? I mean, because I always see your your stuff. I don't know. I guess nowadays is a different thing, but the time it's taken for you to do some of the pieces, I can't even begin to imagine. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, when when I was younger, when we was doing that, it we it was a whole different thing. Mm. Like we was just out to put a name about, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, piecing came a lot later on for me. In fact, I left Graph altogether. Um, for the rave scene, mm -hmm. went and did all that and came back. But um, I'd started painting pieces, but <clears throat> it's funny, really, because me and my friend, Barry, we used to go out and we started painting pieces. But, like, I was so desperate to paint pieces and there was so little places to get paint from. Where I live in my town, it was just pretty dead. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, there was a, f a few places. That so got... what was the town? Was it outside of Nottingham? It, on the edge, on the edge of Nottingham, yeah. I grew up in a place called Stapleford. Uh-huh. So it was between Notts and Derby. And, um, yeah, there were certain places that you could get your paint from, but after a bit they got wise to it and mm. then you was kind of fucked, you know what I mean? So mm. I ended up, like, painting pieces, mush, fills, even, made, even gloss outlines. I was, mm. like... I, we was like me and my mate. We'd like we had mm. three layer yeah. like rubble sacks. Just so you use less with, with with just stuff from sheds and really? and 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 outhouses and stuff. Yo, that shit's so easy as well because you can go to any front garden and if there's a bin with a t can next to it, you take the can. Yeah, it's so much easier to get that than spray. Oh, like you well, won't often I find advocate spray. that highly. Like one person's rubbish is another man's fucking gold. Right? Yeah, but then you know you're walking around with like. <laughs> A Santa sack on your back, just <laughs> full of because you know they're, they're big tubs. You know yourself. Yeah. You know you big got bees. Actually, bees has got a real, real <laughs> slick technique for that. I'll type bees. But like, yeah. So it weren't just a mosh fill. We would go and and like the um, the piece, the piece would like still take long. Mm -hmm. 
because we were, I was like having to brush your outline on, yeah, like, because yeah, we didn't yeah. even have a can to outline it. So, oh, was, so you were brushing? So that? I was even like, it was just brush. We didn't even have rollers. See, we were that's glossing, ghetto, man. Like, that's some ghetto <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> glossing yeah. with fence brushes. That's and, how real it is. Wow. Yeah, and we just wanted to paint. Do you reckon that, did, did you learn from that experience? Because that to me seems really extreme. I, I don't know. Like, I don't, at the time, I kind of felt stupid painting with that paint, yeah. but it was more an, a, a need to paint, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it was like by by all means, just by any means, by any means yeah, yeah, by any means necessary, just just go and get up. So yeah, but like looking back now, it's like well now when you look at it, so many people go out and do mulch fills for the you know save the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Also, more so now, I see that a lot more. Mm. You know, a lot yeah, more lots now. of people. Yeah, and um, through your teens, I mean, we're talking like mid teens now. Yeah, so this is like, um, I don't know, we got, this. I was painting, started painting these pieces like mm, late 90s. Mm. And then um, my friend Barry, uh, I came, we were tight, like he was like a brother to with me, mm. do you know what I mean? We like, we was inseparable. We was like nocturnal, mm. like so, yeah. So like it, to the point we'd go out all night, come back to my mum's house, he he go on the sofa. I go in a chair. We fall asleep. And we'd be asleep. My mum get up, go to work. When we get up, she be coming back. We make sure we we're out, so I didn't get bollocked. Um, and and yeah, we was like nocturnal animals, pro properly. Like we just didn't mm. really see the day. Um, and then shit changed, and you know, we had to, we we kind of like you know when you see too much of someone. Yeah. You start getting a bit niggly with them and yeah. shit. Brotherly, so that, yeah, of yeah. So it started getting a bit niggly. So we had some time out, and then um, I got myself a job working in a glass shop. And I can remember with another friend, Matt, and I came home um, one day. And, oh, a, a kid had been killed on the train tracks that I was just telling you about. Because that's how easy it was. No, just a kid playing with his friends on the tracks. I'm not sure of the ins and outs, whether it was like a game of chicken or whatever. Um, so this had just happened, uh, like a, month, a, a week or so even. And then I, I remember getting home one day and my, my mum was, was like, right, I'm with Matt. I'm like, right, I'm going back out. I'll just walk through the door, grab some stuff to leave. And she's like... Uh, don't go anywhere. I'm like, what's up? He's like, the guy on the tracks. I'm like, yeah, she says, it's Barry. I said, what are you on about? I said, it's Barry. I said, it's not, Mum. They've had this, they've had the funeral. The mm. funeral was this mm -hmm. week. And then she gave me this um, newspaper cut in and it gave a description and it was Baz, man. <gasps> he fucking died on the tracks, yeah. No way. And he would have been... He was 18. Wow. Damn. That must have been a whole well, mix of emotions, but a, a, an awakening of, like, a grand that, scale. That, yeah, that was... Um, I would have been, like, 21. And, yeah, it, it impacted me quite a lot. Um, it's all a bit of a, of a, of a blur now, but... I remember just thinking, fuck, I need to sort my life out. Like, mm. I just needed to, like, find some something to... Just some kind of normality. Because, mm. obviously, like, the depression hit, isn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. And so I was like, fuck. So I ended up going out, um, got myself in a relationship, uh, got a job, uh, got a car on finance to, to make me hold mm. down my job. Mm. Because obviously, if you don't pay yeah. it, your car's gone. Yeah, you yeah, take yeah. it back. So it I'm just means doing, that you've got to go. To yeah, work. yeah, it means you've got to go. So I'm just doing this shit to make myself go keep some, going. somewhere. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So uh, do you think a lot of people do that? Do you think that's part of a course in life? That I don't know, man. I often think that it was like I, I, looking at it now. It was like definitely a survival technique. Do you know what mm. I mean? But it's like I didn't want to do it, but I knew I had to do it mm. just to keep your attention on it's, the yeah. Iron prize. Yeah, something. because. Well, well, yeah. So I kind of stopped painting um, what we was doing because he was the only guy I was doing it with. All my other friends around this point, the majority, well, the, the, the smack wave had hit. Mm -hmm. So everyone that I kind of, in, in the area that I grew up with, was all Into that. onto the smack, yeah. 
So me wow. and Baz had stayed clear of that, doing what we were doing, and then he was gone. And my only other friend, really, at that point was Matt. That's the guy I told you about when mm -hmm. I, who I was with when I found out um, Barry had, Pleasure, had yeah. died, yeah. So what happened then was mm, not long after that, um, fucking, yeah, not long after that, I remember like trying, I'd got a job with Matt. He'd actually got me the job. So, um, so I'm doing this job and then... Um, yeah, I'm just at my house. I was ill, I think. I was ill with something, like I had the flu or some shit. And I remember walking across the landing mm. and I looked out the landing window and I seen his car outside, innit? And I'm like, the fuck's he doing here at this time of night? And I noticed his missus getting out of the car. And I thought, what mm. the fuck's, what's she doing mm -hmm. here? And then like, she, they had like a toddler and um, like a baby as well. Um, so the, the toddler's out and, mm. and, and, and then she come and she's getting the baby out of the car. And I'm like, what the, the fuck, fuck is this, going yeah. on? Like, it was late, like, well, late for the kids to be out, like yeah. 11 or some shit. So I goes down to answer the door. Um, I opened the door and fucking, yeah, Matt was gone as well, man. He died. <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah, so he died. Um, he had an allergic reaction to some substance. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. He was there one minute, oh, and that was it. He was gone the next. So then I was kind of like, wow. the fuck? Like, what are doing? Yeah, what's going on? And that's when I threw myself into music, because I said to you before, yeah. like, I've made music yeah. all my life. I rapped from school. Yeah. Um, so He's so street culture. This guy is so street culture. <laughs> you have no idea. So it was like, yeah, just studio life for me then. Yeah. So I, I missed out on a lot of... A lot of I did the rave scene, but I didn't really do that. Was a bit later. I didn't do the club scene. Mm. You know, all the pub scene and and all that. I, pub I, scene is. Uh, I mean, that, for me, that's a little bit later in life. The pub scene. It, yeah, you, you can dodge that shit for years, and then it catches <laughs> yeah, it's you. It's so ingrained in British culture. It's yeah. like <laughs> you can too much in it. You can so, try yeah. your hard last night to go get drinking in some local pub, but it happens. It, yeah, it does happen, man. <laughs> but, yeah, I managed to avoid that. And, um, yeah, it was just any any spare time I had, it was studio, making music. Um, Incredibly productive. Yeah. any Anything anything that I do, I'm I'm 100%. Mm -hmm. Not giving any less than that. Like, that's just the way it has to be. Does that, can I ask you... Because it does happen with graphics, it certainly does happen with music, especially when you're from a rural town or somewhere outside, just outside of a city. Does that alienate you? Yeah, I think it kind of does. It, defin it definitely isolates you. Isolates, that's a better word, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, this is yeah. what I was saying, like, my life went studio life, I was, like, 100% yeah. into that. Yeah. So why do people I know are out doing this and doing this shit... And I'm like missing out on it, but I'm like my eyes on the prize, yeah. thinking, oh, I'm going to do this, though, I'm going to do that. And fair enough, I didn't. Yeah. Um, and and you know, life changed. And and what happened there was, um, I had a, um, my boy. We moved house, and um, I didn't have anywhere to set the studio up. Mm. So it was like, you know, I'm just being a dad anyway. And not the music on the head. I thought, right, I need to concentrate on being mm. the best dad I can yeah. be for a bit. You know what I mean? At least. So, was doing that. But then it got to the point where I felt like I was going to pop. Like, I needed to do something. An, an outlet. I needed an outlet. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, you well, you know yourself. You know, you're a creative. Anyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone that's creative yeah. knows that we've got to yeah. find some way of getting it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, by hook or by crook. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was that. I was like, need something to do. And then a guy that I know from Derby, uh, old uh, old writer called yeah. Sire, he um, he was like, oh, come. Oh, yeah, I know Sire. I met Sire. I think I met Sire. He was at Derby. I did a gig there and he did a piece. Right, I swear he'd done yeah. a piece in the, in, the, in the venue. Was that at Vines or somewhere yeah. like that? Did he do Bug Jam as well? I think he I did know. painted at Bug Jam as well. I think it's the same, I think it's the same guy. He right. got fire anyway, but yeah, that, that rings bells. Yeah, so he was like, oh, come, paint the, come and paint the boards or mm. whatever in mm. my yard. I was like, all right, cool. So I found some spare time, went around, paint the boards in his yard. And I was just like, he's getting this paint out, and I'm just like, the fuck is this? Like the, like the 
the colours and shit. I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? He was like, oh, yeah, you get it from the shop. I'm like, what? Like a paint shop? I was like, yeah. Man, I was hooked, like, instantly from that point. Mm-hmm. I was like, boom, went to this paint shop. It was just like a candy store, man. I was just, wow, I want this, I want that, yeah. I want this, I want that. The and psychological then, factor in that is mm. real. Like, if you're in there and you see all these colours and you don't even know where to begin, mm. it's beautiful. Yeah, but you're just buying every colour that you like mm. and then trying to make sense with them and thinking it's the shit and it's just fucking awful. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the puzzle begins, though. <laughs> but, yeah, so then um, then what happened there was another writer, a writer from around the way uh, called Timo, he invited me out to paint um, a spot in Derby, some old yard. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm going to go out and, and paint this yard. And that was it. Like, this yard was, like, ten minutes away from me. Um, so I was there fucking, like, I'd finish work early. I'd, I'd go lay curbs all morning, get them smashed out by dinner time just so I could go and paint a piece in the afternoon. So what year was this, then? When did you see... So you you I started painting... It was only... I came back and started painting pieces was about six years ago. Ah. Yeah, so there's a massive void. Yeah. There's a massive void where I was, where I just wasn't doing anything, and then it was other than music and being a dad, and then it was like, right, I need to be. I'm not doing music now, so this is it. Hundred percent needs to go into this. But here's the interesting thing, and I definitely want to get into this, your techniques and um, just the. I mean, I don't know. We we obviously we we can only go so far in the timeline as what you were doing before. But what you're doing now in the six years, I guess, of development from jumping back in, oh, like it's, it's leaps. It's like it's... It's fast progression. Uh, with like. everybody, ahead of everyone. You know, it, it's fast progression for real. I do like... Um, I remember bumping into um, Alert yeah. at a jamming. Big up Alert. Yeah, man. Whoa. So I bumped into him at a jam in Leicester, maybe about three or four years yeah. ago and we ended up talking and he came up to me and he was just like where the fuck did you come from yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. I was like bro yeah, it's like, a shocker. he was just like he was intrigued as to like where I come from because yeah. like you just seen my shit just pop up he said I just seen your stuff just yeah. appear from nowhere like yeah. but yeah it, so you know it, I know it was a fast progression like, crazy but it was again that was me 100% the fades and shades and just the, 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 just the techniques in which you're yeah, you're creating these, it's, they're like organisms on the wall, right? You know what I mean? But then there's a lot of, I don't know, it's a craft. And I often think to myself, well, okay, how much of that is skill set and repetition? How much of that is, like, talent? How much of that is, like, real? I call it my three Ds. Mm. Yeah, so it's desire, determination and dedication. Then that's my three Ds. Yeah, you know. Wow. The three Ds. Yeah, the three Ds. Which creates that three D. Yeah. <gasps> so <laughs> oh, he did. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I love that shit. Um Six years you say. I mean this this again gives you a good measure on what it takes. How many pieces do you do a week? Now I can't I paint most days. Most days. I paint most days, so um, at some point I'll paint in a day. Really? So, yeah, so it's most days. Yo, okay. What, right, anything from fraps to... Uh, I, I, I don't even really paint throws or anything anymore. It's just pieces for me. What? How long does it take you to do those kind of... I mean, this, now this is starting to sound like, hold on, what the fuck? Like, so you're doing these burners. How long does it take? It all depends on what it is. Because um, I, I have this thing with... with in lockdown, like some mad shit happened in uh, just before lockdown, and I ended up um, studying colour. I mean, I was looking back at my shit, and I was just like, "Don't make sense." Like, I painted so many pieces, and I'm not what what's not right. Something's not right, and right. that's when I started to like think about colour more. Yeah. So I was like, "What colours work with each other?" and 
I was like looking just at life, just at life, just mm. just you just look out the window mm. and see what's working. You know what I mean? And yeah. look at look at your clothes, and see what's working. Like sometimes I get a color scheme. It'll be from a from a, a fucking pair of trousers. I did a piece that was from my ex's trousers. Honestly, like <laughs> one one morning, I think it was one morning or evening. We was just like we was lying on the bed and just like oh I'm gonna wear these tomorrow or whatever. And I just clocked them. I was like, let me take a picture of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like some floral shit going on. What's the basic parameters of like? Because I, th- I would argue a lot of a lot of writers, whether it's whether it's from a perspective of depth and highlights, you know, the decal to the, you know, the the key line. It's like these things all make a difference in they how do. it jumps out of the wall. Definitely, definitely. And there's so this you know the, the the science is mad. Like there's so much to learn, man. Like I'm still on the only scratching the edge. Like the 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 main thing to do is is to uh, to try and keep the contrast. So you can use so many colors, but it's making sense with them. Like I did um I paint a lot with a guy called Ken, of Vegas from um the no, West Midlands side. So mm-hmm. big up Ken. Um, I'll take him. Yes. All these um, new names, go check them out on Instagram. You know what it is. For real, man. You know, don't just stay on this thing. Jump on and have a look. <laughs> I mean, you got your multimedia set up. You know what you're doing. So we, we started painting uh, together. And we, mate, we paint some mad shit. He, like, he doesn't even... He literally just turns up now. Like, he, it's at that point where he's like, he likes it. He, well, no sketches. He, he'll have a sketch, but he don't know what... Half the time, he don't know what colours he's using until we get to the wall. Like, how many how many colours do you call? Okay, so they call them. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, right. So <laughs> black and white sketch, on it goes. So how much paint do you bring to the to the party? I'll normally figure out a colour scheme, um, like in the in the in the day or two before. Um and it can be anything from from like I don't know, sometimes we just use like ten colours. <laughs> but but like the challenge is more so making like something work with even more colours is even more fucking tricky. Yeah, bet. So I can't remember now. I think we, I might be wrong, but I'm sure like we did one that was nearly 40 colours in it. What? Yeah. What, what, scraps as well as... Yeah, that's what it was. We like, he was like, oh, we ain't got a scheme. I was like, right, I'm going to just bring two bags of scraps. He's going to bring his bags of scraps. We rocked up. He's like, right, I'll mush the wall. You sort the colour schemes. So I'm like, I'm just stood there with like a fucking 150 cans of dregs on the floor. Just, and I made, we made like, well, I made like, um, I think it, because we only had a little amount of each can as well. We just chopped the piece into into sections. So each section was a colour change. So it was a different... I think it... I can't remember if there's like eight colour schemes. Do what? That's mad. So it was about eight colour schemes. And a rainbow. And about... And, you know, and there's like however many shades in each colour scheme. So it was just but like... Yeah, man, using up dregs. So it was about 40... I think it was about 40 cans, different colours, yeah. All right, so when you came... <laughs> so you said 10 earlier, which I find this remarkably hard to believe. How do you create that fade? You know... Listen, guys, what we're talking about here is a pedigree of character that I can only imagine. You'll look at the people around you. You go for full production events as well. You probably yeah. look around and see people. Say, Do you ever feel like, yo, I'm glad I bought that many? Like, did you see this guy? He's fucking rolled in with this many. Like, you're part of that fraternity where you're there to do the fucking job. Ten to me don't sound enough. How are you doing those fades and stuff like that? (laughs) I know there's a lot going on in that (laughs) sentence. I need to know shit. I don't go there like that. That for me, again, it's just all. It's about me. It's just about me. I'm not. I don't care what anyone else is doing. I don't. But have you ever turned around and looked at someone and said, oh, "Give me some. Who do you that you've painted alongside that you're like? I didn't know he bought that many cans. Somebody you've no totally one. Enjoyed. No I one. Don't never. Th- or not Goldie never, Pulse. Any of them? No, I never think. I never, never ever thought about how many cans really? someone's bought. So you, I guess I'm just kind of in my own little bubble. You know, yeah. I'm just like just thinking about what I'm gonna do. Like I don't really. I see graph, I don't watch it. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't want to be influenced by it. Uh, it's so uh, easy to like subliminally pick shit up uh, from other people. That's why I'm still finding my own style. Mm. You, know I mean? you can't make style happen overnight. That's a journey. Yeah. That's that you that needs to find you, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so I always think your your pieces kind of look like the inside of a car engine. <laughs> they kind of move. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know that slickness that the inside of a car has? You got that. 
I always feel like it's got that. There's a, there's respect, a real brother. grit to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, respect, man. Yeah, I bet you've never heard that before. No, I haven't <laughs> heard that before, man. Yeah, oh, it's the imagination. People talk about the colours a lot, but um, in a good way and in a bad way. You know, people will say... What, you think it's too no, much? No. People nah. say, Yo, you, you hide behind colours or whatever. So every now and again, I'll go out and paint a one colour field, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. just like, boom, I'll post that up. Like, because it's all internet shit, you know yeah. what I mean? It's just, like, internet kind of... It brought a lot to graph and it fucking took a lot away from it. Yeah, because arguably you wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. Be here. <laughs> we exactly. Be yeah, the, for, for like for meeting people and stuff, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone's just got an opinion, haven't they? And, yeah. they? and and they like to voice it, man. You know, what oh, I mean? they love to voice it. So, so yeah. So then you hide behind colours, but I could tell you, man, you try and paint a piece with forty colours. That's impossible. It's not I easy. Got, bro. It's not easy. Oh, for me, it's impossible. The whole idea of like, I don't know. I guess it depends where you're at. But like you say, if you really want to take it to the street, I'm pretty sure you could knock out something with four colours. I mean, no Yeah, different. yeah, I painted, um, I painted a... Well, I painted a piece of uh, four colour, but it, was, it wasn't... The detail wasn't in depth, so I'd just gone for a fade out from the middle. This was last week. Um, I rocked up at the spot, actually, as... And three, there was three guys there that I know, and they were just like leaving. And I didn't even know at this point if I was going to paint still anyway. I was like just walking around with my paint on my back. I was in a right indecisive mood because I painted every day before and I was a bit tired. And then the um, guy says to me, um, just paint some of it. I was like, yeah, fuck it. That's all I needed. Fuck it. Yeah. That's all I needed. Just paint some of it. So I, I started motioning up. They, I started doing my outline. They left. Hour and a half later, I was done, man. Like, yeah. Some, so it, hour and a half. Uh, you know, hour and a half, and it it was um, it was it was a fade out from. It was black into purple, and then it had like a blue bar, faded out in the middle, and then a, a pink three D, which was obviously that's lovely. Three tones of pink. I always use three tones, if not four. Yeah. For for the, to get the depth of the three D to make it make sense and the, and the, I've seen it I think I've seen it because you've got a white going through the pink as well right little thin line of white am I right Oh, it might be another yeah one. yeah I Is put that... it on the story I yeah, put it on the story yeah, I don't think I've posted it yeah yeah, yeah love yeah. it love it yeah I mean but then again and at the same time it's the attention to detail that that you bring to your pieces There's one thing like being critiqued for anything but when you make that shit look easy. Which all the best people do. It's only when you stand in front of a thing and you're looking at it for what it really is, do you actually understand? Actually, there's a science behind this. There's been th there's the ten thousand hours that I'm looking in front of right here. It ain't just a case of show up and do it mm. in an hour and a half. You know what I mean? There's mm. some lessons here, um, and that's what I love about writers like you, because you you make it look easier. Because right. you've just gone and done the shit super right. quick, but it's all in the practice, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, again, for me, it's not about painting quick. That was just like I had to, I was painting. I had to go and do all the stuff. Like, for me, mm. I'm like, my happy time is painting. So yeah. I'll happily paint from sunrise to sunset. I know a lot of people, it's the fucking last thing they want to do. Mm. Like, they hate that shit. Some people want to get up, get gone. That's cool enough, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm cool with that, I understand it, I get it. But for me, that's the only time I'm at peace, man. People are asked the question, and I wouldn't want you to overindulge or I don't want to seem like I'm prying, of course, but that whole morning, noon and night thing, that's quite a luxury, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, how, do, how do you go about your day? I mean, how, like, the paint that you use alone is a lot. You know, to garner that much in space, I'm pretty sure you've got a backup of, of a shed's worth of paint and whatnot. Yeah. But how do you how do you free up so much time that you're able to do that in a day? How's that without prying too deeply, of course? Because you know, so I, paint, I paint for a living. <laughs> hey, so I, so I paint for a living now, which is a new thing as well. Um, a lot of people, I know a fair few people that paint for a living, and they've said to me over the you know the last few years, "What the fuck are you still digging holes for?" Like, why are you laying curbs every day in all weather um, when you could be just out fucking painting mm. walls? And it's like, at that point, I'm like, yeah, but I've got family. I've got a steady bill, uh, um, a steady wage coming in. I yeah. know what I'm getting. I know what's going out. The job's stable. And it was just a risk I didn't want to take. Because you're putting other people, like your family, yeah, through yeah, the exactly. same... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So what happened? Because I wasn't painting as much then. 
I was still painting, but not to the extent I'm painting now, because um, what happened, how I ended up like painting for a living was um, fucking hell. So just at the beginning of lockdown, yeah. I got nicked painting. Right. So they fucking had me in the cells for the night. And um, when I came out in the morning, I spoke to my boy's mum. She's like, oh, you yeah. like, oh, didn't try and ring me last night. Yesterday or whatever, I said, because I was in the fucking cells and she's laugh laughed at me. She's like, Wait, what the fuck are you doing in, in the cells? Painting? Mm. I was like, yeah. She's like, you twat. Yeah. She's like, don't worry. Do you know what I mean? It'll be all good. I'll help you get your stuff back. Because they've been and raided my ass and fucking took all my shit, oh. like, all my pain. Yeah, they took fucking... It was a joke, man. Oh. Yeah, so they took everything. Um, and then, yeah, so I got out of the cells the next morning, spoke to her. Um, I fell asleep. I woke up to the phone ringing and she was dead, man. What? Yeah, she died. Your missus? We weren't together, my boy's mum, we weren't together at this point. Um, we'd been apart a little while. We were still best friends. Um, and yeah. How did she die? Um, it was a blood clot. <sighs> what? So she was there and then... I went to sleep and woke up and she was gone. I had to go and get my boy and stuff. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that. What the fuck? So, okay. This, this podcast here that you're listening to has been a long time in the making. We talked about doing this uh, arguably like two years ago, right? Yeah, right. Like, and it had just been an ongoing kind of, not even... It was like ships every time. It was like, yo, you up for it yet? Oh, no, things going on. Maybe, maybe like, there's something going on. But never did I ever expect that to have been going on behind that, the curtain. Yeah, that was, um, that was the beginning of lockdown. <gasps> so, Brother. so what happened there was some other shit hit the fan as well. Um, um, the relationship I was in at that point went down the fucking pan, that went tits up. So, yeah, basically... Through the through the morning of, of your first baby mom? Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. I yeah. can imagine that. Like, quite... so... Yeah, yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? It's a weighty thing, isn't it, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so basically I ended up um, moving into a house with just, like, me and my boy, which is like a shell, really, do you know what I mean? We yeah. moved into this house and, and went and did lockdown together, man. Just trying to fucking get my head around. Oh my goodness! Trying to get my head around what had happened, dude. Just... Dude, the magnitude of that as a life change for both of you. Yeah, for but sure. also within this horrible, almost what seems like a long time yeah, ago, man. surrealness of of the COVID lockdown. Yeah, life weren't fucking. Fun life was a shit for a lot of people yeah. at the time. But this is a lot rough. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I've got. I hope you don't mind me asking. You can ask me anything bro. you want, bro. Okay, cool. Um, what was it like at that time with your son reconnecting, uh, or rather recalibrating under these such extreme circumstances? It was a bit surreal, bro. Yeah. To be honest, um, yeah, it was a bit surreal. It was all a bit mad because she. That was April. 17th of April, she Which died. right at the start of lockdown. Yeah. yeah, and then the 6th of May was her birthday. So it was her birthday straight after, and, and then it was my birthday after that, and fucking... Then it was my lad's birthday. Oh, man, there was just so much shit, like, it was just going off, like, pop, popping off just one after another, and... Oh, you must have been numb to it. By the, your birthday, you would have been like, oh, whatever. Mate, I was... I thought I was doing so fucking well. Yeah. And um, the reality is I lost myself. Like, I can see it now, mm. do you know what I mean? Mm. But, yeah, I was I was functioning and making sure that my boy had everything he needed and I was there for him, I was his rock. But inside, I, w I was just gone mm. because I was fighting for so much as well. I was fighting for fucking normality, do you know what I mean? It was like yeah. I wanted... how I'd, My life had just gone from everything being fucking nice to just the Crushed. absolute fucking opposite. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and there was no fucking light at the end of the tunnel or fuck shit. Like I, I'm no, as you know, like as I've said, man, I'm no stranger to loss. You know, I lost friends early, mm. lost my mum, but this fucker hit different. Because what was, you, what was, yeah, talk to me. What was the difference? Because this obviously impacted you, on when you when a you've lot. got a, a boy involved, it's a different different. Yeah. It's just a different story, bro. Yeah, because yeah. you feel everything twice. You with me? Yeah. Everything you feel, you instantly think, shit, he's Him. feeling this. Yeah. What can I do? Do you know what I mean? And then you kind of bypass. And well, you're trying and, to yeah. you're trying yeah, you're trying to fix him at the same time. What like what's 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 cutting him up is fucking chopping you up. Do you know what I mean? So and the shit thing about that was like Life goes on, right? Mm. I know this. Time heals. I know this. Mm. But at that point, fucking life wasn't moving. No. It wasn't going on. You was fucking frozen in time. You were in jail, man. That you emotional jail. You were frozen in time. Like, yeah. there ain't nowhere to go. I can't even go out fucking paint anything because yeah. I'm with my boy. Yeah. In lockdown. In lockdown. <laughs> so it was just like... It, I, mate, I look back now. It's funny, right? I was thinking about it the other day. Um, like how fucking deep you can go into this abyss. Like, it's hard to explain. It's like when you say like when you go through dark times, it can be so dark, but once it's dark, you don't know how fucking deep it's getting mm. because it's dark and you can't see. Mm. It's a bit like, like swimming in the sea. So when you swim down, like when they're scuba diving or whatever, mm. yeah? After a bit, it gets darker because there's no sunlight. There's mm. no light getting down mm. there. Pitch black, they can't see. Mm. But think how much fucking deeper that ocean goes for. Mm. Yeah, and how deep. So once you're in the dark, you don't realise how fucking deep in the dark you are. Do you know what I mean? Mm. There's levels to that shit. Yeah. Until you suddenly start feeling the woozies. Until you start to come out. Until you start to come out. And again, that's like swimming as well. You ever been like deep and like you 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 hit the bottom, you jumped in somewhere, you look up and you think shit, I ain't got enough oxygen to get yeah, back yeah, up. Yeah. I'm that yeah, deep, yeah, do you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so yeah, you you're, you're like swimming, yeah, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? And and every fucking time you put your arms up, you're hoping for your fingers to break the top of the water because you're thinking I've got nothing left. I've got yeah, nothing yeah. left. And it, and it just don't, you can't see how far away it is and that's how it is now. Like I've spent the last the last I'd say, well, I don't know how many months because I don't know how deep I was. So I don't know how deep I've been coming out of yeah, it. Yeah. But I do know I'm coming out of that. Do you know what I mean? Like since May, something happened. I turned a corner um, and I started to see the light and I'm heading towards it. What when, happened in May that was significant? Um, I don't know what it was. Um, I think it was, I had a birthday jam in Leicester and invited a load of people, like, big love to everyone that turned up to that as well. Like, that Big up my Leicester crew as well. They, mate, they came from fucking every... They came from here, like, yeah. Slob came up, man. <laughs> What's that, Slob? Yeah, yeah oh, wicked. Like, people travelled for that, so it was nice. And, and, I, and it was just the, the, the best thing. I took my boy Alton Towers the day before. Always a winner. Yeah, man. And it was a bit weird because, like, that was somewhere that I always went with his mum. So it was, it was a lot of memories there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But... How was that? F how did that feel? Did it break some ice? Did it cover some ground? That, that, maybe this was part of the change. Do you know what I mean? This, maybe this is all part of it because we went and did that. Yeah. I didn't get sad or anything on the day. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It, it, it was. Maybe like there was that it, fear in the back of your mind that oh, I'll go before to... going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh fucking like this. How's this gonna go? Do you know Therapy, what I mean? Therapy in it. But we did it. We came back and then I got up on the next morning to do the jam. And I just got to the wall. And I'd, um, I started painting it and had a little a message went off my lad. And um, he was saying, you was right about the husky, Dad. Because he wanted this husky in it, like this life, this giant size husky. Like you had to win it on the basketball things. Uh, OK. So I was like chucking tanners in it, trying to win this husky. And I couldn't get it. And then I was just like, oh, mate, let's just go. You know what I mean? And he was <laughs> I've like, he had a bit, he had a bit quid of a, on this. Yeah, already, yeah, he had a bit of a sucker. Like, bro, I'll just buy you one, innit? It's like, yeah. it's not the same, though. You're winning it for me. I was like, bro, I'll just buy you one. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. wasting any more dough. So um, he sent me this message saying, he was right about the husky. I didn't need it. He said, yesterday, Dad, my day... My day started off and then he did like an unhappy face emoji. Mm. And then he says, but when I saw you smile, and then he put, he, it went and then he put like a smiley face Yo, emoji. And I just, thought, I just thought, I just thought, shit, is that where I've been? Mm. 
Like for the fact yeah. that like I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm fucking doing good, do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But I'm, he ain't seeing the But he's not seeing me happy. Well. Like yeah. and happy is something you can't fake. Yeah, it's true. You can't fake it's happy, serious. you see through it. So yeah, man. So to oh. get that message, mm. I was just like, shit. Rain check. Yeah, yeah, because perhaps that's just the conversation that was it was uh, it was unspoken. But then all of a sudden, when he said it yeah. in a text message, the penny dropped. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, yo, if I'm happy, he's happy. <gasps> yeah, yo. man. Yeah, just to know that, like, yeah, it was mad. And so, and then since that point, like, my outlook's just been different, bro. Talk to me about that. I don't know what it is. Like, I didn't like traveling on my own. I spent like, um, I spent t like you know a few years traveling with my my partner at the time. She would go everywhere I was going. So like all everywhere I painted, every journey back, every journey there, I was always with someone. Mm. I always had company. Mm. I've never been a fan of my own company because mm. I've always had fucking demons mm. since I was a kid. Mm. So like I've always been with someone or doing something that, that keeps my brain occupied yeah. Yeah. to stop these demons fucking showing up, you know? And I was like, all of a sudden, I've got no one at all. Do you I know think I mean? a lot of people can relate with that. Like, what you've just said there alone is super brave because not a lot of people can admit to their own demons. We all have them. We all have them, you man. I mean? What's really important there is that you've un unmasked it. You know what I mean? And perhaps... And I'm sure you're finding this, that the whole idea of inner peace, it has to start with, with you, don't it? Mm. And like you say, sometimes having those people around, at the detriment of whether they're the right people, it's just to be there with them. For real. I think without Graf, I would have, it would have been a different story for me. Mm. Like, because again, it, this is what, this is, was something I had to fall back on too. Not only just for work, mm. Just for me, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm being my boy's rock and I'm making sure shit's right. Mm. But you still need to do you, man. Mm. You still need to take that time for yourself. And Graf was that for me. You know, it could have been a fucking hit in the bottle or mm. whatever or, or some other unsafe shit. You didn't shit. do that? Didn't, didn't do any of that. Um, I, I made sure I didn't even fucking drink yeah. anything the minute I found out I knocked a lot of things on the head mm. the minute I had that phone call. Mm. Because I knew I got to, I couldn't fuck up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not in the place where I need to give 100 to this now. For, for at least for the time being, while I try and get my head around what the fuck has just happened. How, your relationship with your ex, your baby mama passed away. Did there, was there, a, was there a, a kind of revelation in your head that kind of concluded, yeah, oh, actually, maybe. Subconsciously, maybe there was a lot more to your relationship with her in your mind than maybe that was even discussed or recognised at the time she was alive. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, our friendship was just fucking brilliant, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is, this is a person that's like... Probably, like, you know... Like, this was the person that would light up a room, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the character. Like, she didn't give a shit mm. about anything. Like, she would be stupid, as stupid as she needed to, mm -hmm. to make someone smile. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was like, so... Yeah, she's cool. She, you know, man, yeah. It's just, yeah, what they say, they take the best ones and shit, don't they? They take the best ones, indeed, they do, brother. And uh, I guess for the son, like, he's become this North Star for you and this is what the world's about. Yeah, man. That's what it's about. How mm -hmm. fucking cool is that? I mean, it's um I just need to I just need to now I, I like and then this is a, another reason I paint so hard. Like this is what I'm doing. I want to make him proud. I want to leave some kind of fucking legacy or something. Yeah, and the reason hard. why I put all my shit on the Instagram it mainly is so, mm. you know, he's got, he can see that, man. He can go and look at that when he wants. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of people do graph for different reasons. One thing I will say is like, you know, whether it's graffiti or temp contemporary art, everyone has these m 
um, life changing realizations. Things happen, which you know, art does save lives, especially when you have a creative mind. The only difference with graph, which like, I always like to try and embellish more, is that there's such a there's a choice of risk factor, and there is you know, it's not always it's not always illegal, of course, but. You know, there's some areas which are tolerated. There's some places which are legal. But you can also go down the wrong way with the thing you love as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could have quite easily gone, right, fuck it, you know, mm. blowing my load on some trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graffiti is risky. Mm. It's dangerous because it's a lifestyle, well, a that's, real lifestyle. But, but that's the excitement. Yeah. Well, it's the same with anything. Any thrill seeker, there mm. needs to be danger involved for it to be exciting. It's the mm. way everything works. It's the same as a roller coaster. If yeah. they weren't frightening, you won't fucking enjoy them as much, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. You'd just be sat on it like, what am I doing on this again? Nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you know you can probably go on the same roller coaster three or four times, but I think with graph is like every journey, every thing is fucking different each time. Yeah, man. I know. I appreciate it all. I respect it all, man. But for me. Like, regardless of what anyone thinks or what anyone says about what I'm doing, I'm fucking doing it for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it for anyone else. Mm -hmm. So you can have your opinions, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, mm -hmm. when you're... Bro, people make noise. When you're riding through hell, you, in, when you're taking a drive through hell, you don't give a fuck about what's playing uh, on the radio. All sudden, That's just yeah. background noise. Yeah, yeah, totally. All of a sudden, things, real-life shit creates a perspective. You're just looking for a way out, bro. You're yeah. just trying to just focus on yourself. And that's all you can do, just focus on yourself. And don't numb that shit. Yeah. With anything. With anything. With anything. Own, own it. Own the pain. Own it. Own it. Just ride it. Just ride it because... Oh, shit gets hard, bro. Every, everything has a time span, man. So just ride it. Like, you can't rush it. That's what I learned. Like, you can't rush it. Like, you want to be better, but you can't be better until, until it's, it, it's time. You just have to ride it until, and it will get time. Do you know what I mean? It gets to the time, you know. I thought I was coming out of it a year ago, and I wasn't at all. I was still in shitsville. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But in my head, because I must have been in such a shit place, I thought, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm coming out of this now. Yeah. And then like a month later, I'm thinking, no, I'm coming out of it now. And then yeah, a month yeah. after that, I'm thinking, shit, no, I'm coming out of it now. And like, I'm driving down here today thinking, I'm coming out of it now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this is some grown man talk because, you know, there's some kids out there. We, we have loads of different ages, genres, demographics and countries that tune in and watch this. And a lot of times, uh, you know, I think some of the pain and despair that young people get themselves into, it, a lot of it is just lack of um, perhaps they, they don't, obviously they don't know themselves to the degree that someone who older would be. But, you know, those instinctive um, decisions that they make, oh, I'm going to fucking do a bag of coke or I'm gonna mm. you know it, that pain masking it's like what do you say to people that that as yet are still trying to find their feet in where they're going in life or, or having hard times or you know what would you say because you, you seem extremely well versed and I'm sure you talk to your son about this quite a bit yeah, the main thing is you know it, the main thing is literally what I just said just you know you have to accept and appreciate that it's a time thing. Like, don't ever think, like, in the moment is a scary place. Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, it might not be that scary the next day. Uh, you can make a lot of shit decisions when you're in that place. And you ain't going to stay in that place. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not numbing it, like, when you numb something with whatever, you know, whether it be, like, um, pills or alcohol or whatever, mm. it never goes away. It never goes away, bro. Like, you have to just get on that roller coaster, mm. the same roller coaster. Just get on it and ride it, and it'll finish. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It won't keep going. It will last longer if you start doing shit. Some Eckhart Tolle shit, man. Some proper Eckhart Tolle shit. Man, I mean, it's just. It must be hard. You can make people make that. Like, stuff lasts longer without even realising, you know? You know, and, and ultimately, some, it's the end for some people, man. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Because they start doing what they're doing and then it turns into that's the only thing. That's the only thing they end up doing, yeah. That's the only thing they can do because they're, they're that fucking lost in it then. 
<sighs> so you, as, as shit and like, oh no, it might sound like bullshit to a lot of people. Like, you know, I'm not the only one that's been in a dark place. But all I can say is, just, just, just ride it. Just ride it, man. <sighs> so the people at, the, at the end of the day, like, like shit can't hurt you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just something. You're in charge, bro. Yeah. You're in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you can't control emotions, but you can ride them. Yeah. I think that's what people mistake. They, and it's again, it's going back it's to fear, owning bro, again. And it's fear. Fear, yeah. Because you got you have to own it. You, you just not even own it. You just have to accept it. Yeah. It's not even, I'm not talking about being the boss of it. No, just reality. Although that's how I try to feel about it. Really? Because that's more a... Uh, um, a confident thing, a confident way to look at it. Yeah. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Like, not today. I'm doing this. That's just momentary, isn't it? it doesn't, that doesn't save you. No. Mm. Wow. But just keep going for the next day. Just keep going for the next day, man. Like, the, ne the next day, you know, fucking, who knows what might happen the next day because as much as shit things can happen at any time, mm. good things can happen too, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and you, you don't notice them because you're so deep in exactly. the Exactly, the thing is, I was thinking about on the way down here, brother. Mm. You, what happens is with, with, like, not just in anything general, I go back to, like, graph politics and stuff. Like, there's so many graph politics and, and so much bitchiness and, and stuff, and I won't let that shit in mm. because what happens is your brain, it's like, it's like a hard drive. So when you fill it up with all this negative shit... You the, run out of space, man. You run out of space for anything good to come into mm. it. And you end up in that place, bro. Mm. Like, since I started shoving all that shit out, bare good shit's been fucking dropping in place, you know mm. what I mean? So it's just like, wow, like, recently I've been doing fucking stuff I never, never mm. thought I'd be doing. I've been meeting people I never thought I'd meet. Do the less shit she gives, the happier you'll be. It's true. It's true, ain't it? It's true. And great opportunities and shit just come around the corner it's and you're true. ready to receive you know them. Me, I read these things like people say, oh, you have to like believe in stuff to make it happen and that. And when you're in that place, you just read it and you think, bullshit. <laughs> That's a load of bullshit mm. that's happened to you because you're lucky. Mm. But I kind of feel that now, do you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe not to the extent of like the way some people's gone, but definitely, definitely like, aware of the difference mm. now like it's, everything's like everything's a blessing or a lesson man mm. and everything starts well, I wake up in the morning and I, I, I often have like the best fucking day but that's because you set your tempo you right. set your tempo in the day even that alone just having some sort of practice and I guess that comes back to graph as well by the way that you're talking is like actually fill your day up with, with what makes you happy, happy man. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. Give a fuck about anyone else. As long as everything's good and everyone around you is good, like, do what you do. Mm. Look after yourself. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Which is why I paint so much. Anyone, you know, like, and anyone I say now, like, anyone that you see painting a lot, like, if you see someone out painting and it's like all of a sudden they're painting like fucking 20 pieces in a month, mm. just send them a fucking message, man. Because mm. I guarantee you there's a reason why they're doing that. Mm. Ooh. There's a reason, bro. Uh. They're not just going out there all of a sudden because they think, mm, I've had a new lease of life, I'm just going to go out and paint 20 pieces. Mm. They're fucking escaping, bro, from something, and they might need someone to talk to them. <gasps> Whoa, I didn't even think of it like that. For real. Like, uh, one, uh, a good thing about the Instagram, when I was in... Lockdown in fucking Shitsville, Tennessee. <laughs> like, <laughs> the people, I got desperate, bro. I was like, um, I was, I was trying to stay afloat. So I'm just looking around for driftwood, anything to hang on to at mm. that point. Like, why well, I'm trying to make sense of what's just gone on and what what I need to do. And because you know, I'm trying to deal with loss, I'm trying to deal with a breakup. I'm trying to deal with. Um, the fact I'm now a single parent, mm. like, uh, and I need to be my boys rock, you know, so many things that and I'm just trying to yeah. filter through them and, and d deal with them one at yeah, a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had no one. I had no one. I couldn't even see my own fucking family, bro. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's like I ended up putting some shit on my Instagram 
mate, the amount of fucking people that messaged me was fucking incredible. People I don't know. I ain't got a fucking clue who they are. Mm. Sending me these big, long messages, brother. I'm mm. just like, that shit touched me, man. Mm. Hit me different. I was like, the fuck? People that I just think didn't give a shit. People I know that I thought didn't give a fuck. Mm. Gave a fuck enough mm. to, to ask. To big up you lot. Big up all you lot. Seriously. And that made, and that alert again, that made a difference. Mm. Do you know what I mean? To have, from going to ha having no one just to know, just to having someone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even whether you fucking knew them or not. That's why if I see someone in that, like, I'll be on yeah. the gram or something, if I, if I see someone put up some random post, I'm going to ask them how the fuck they're doing. Yeah. It's super important, isn't it? I don't know how this turned into a big, like, mental health, like, thing. Man. There's, like, not much graph going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, like, <laughs> All right, well, let's just get into this last subject, Matt, all right? Before we... These guys, are, you can you have your Kleenex and clean your eyes out as we're talking. <laughs> Most depressing podcast. For real, man. man, no, it's fucking important. Super important, man. Like some, some podcasts really do hit certain nerves and that ain't always, always about growth. Bro, I can only talk about what, mm. what I know, innit? Do you know what I mean? All right, then lastly, let's talk about ILC. How the hell did you get into that business? What happened? <laughs> Where did this all suddenly come from? Mate, that was an honour, brother. Yeah, um, man. What happened was when I was out, when I'd been out painting the Derby Yard, I was on about. I was painting there like I was writing a different name at the point at that point, right. <clears throat> and um, I changed my name, and I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly who who mentioned me. Someone mentioned me. I'm not sure whether it was nor. I feel like it was Nor, because I kind of knew him from when my brother mm. used to paint. Oh, man, yeah, amazing as well. Another big man. Painting. Yeah, man. So it's like, I think he'd mentioned, like, I'd painted with him once or twice. Mm. And he must have mentioned something. And then I got invited up to, um, a, uh, like, a jam in, in Derby, and they'd invited me... And Zuki up there. Oh, big up Zuki. Yeah, so, and we were both like, we'd just gone up there to just have, have a paint. Like, so yeah. I, that was the first time I met him as well. He was a fucking cool guy, man. One of the coolest dudes. And, um, yeah, they just literally said, right, well, this is this and that. And fucking, like, if you want to be in, when you finish painting your piece, put, you, put ILC on it. So I'm painting this fucking piece, trying to do, like, the best piece I've ever done in my life, mm -hmm. man. It definitely wasn't. They fucking saw something in me, do you know what I mean? I weren't painting that wow. hot. I weren't painting that hot. And to me, these are fucking legends, like... Yeah, but, bro, like, listen, these guys, they can see ability. Like, it ain't about how many, it's what yeah. you're doing. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's definitely a, a, a quality over quantity thing mm -hmm. going on, but... Like, this was the best fucking crew I could have ever been asked to be in because, like, productions is my shit. That's what I enjoy doing because I get to turn off for two days doing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Turned off for two days. Life's gone. Demons fucked off. Like, two, yeah, yeah. Day, two days in my happy zone. That's two days of a... You know what, though? I'm, I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, it's, there's very few... Oh, God, here, like, comment below, all right? Don't judge me. But when I think of that era... All right, so I think of VOP... Mm. Production, I think of ILC. I will go as so far as say Sin. You know, I'm now going into the hip hop connection recesses. ACR. Um, look, I mean, there's not a lot of production crews. Definitely not now. In the UK. Definitely not now. Right? Mm. I miss that shit. Big I time. miss it, big man. So when I got asked into this crew, it was like, that's why it was like, wow. Like, I couldn't have asked to be, asked to be in a better crew. Like, mm. And these are people that. You know, I grew up when my brother's taking me out into knots to, yeah. to do stuff and I'm seeing that graph. Mm, mm, mm. These are people I thought I'd never even... I didn't, these are the magical people that I'm trying to paint pictures of in my head. Like, mm. who the fuck are these? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What do these look like? Mm. So all that was that for me. Craze, Pulse, sort of, mm. you know what I mean? <sighs> and Pops. He Pop, was probably yeah. my biggest influence. Hard. Bro. He was probably, but, but that, again, comes back to hip-hop connection because mm. he was in that. Yeah, 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 totally. Do you know what I mean? People that don't, 
especially when you're outside of the UK, the, the weight in that magazines like that, Represent Magazine, Fat Boss, all these kind of era defining where there was graph segments in there. Graphitism wasn't even around. But, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Was it, you know? So you, I would read Hip Hop Connection literally just for mm. those pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd, I was interested in what KRS One was doing yeah, or whatever, but yeah, yeah. for me, it was like, I'm checking the back pages first. Yeah, yeah. Bro, like, I used to. I used to fucking shoot my pants if there was more than four pages of graph in the back of Hip Hop Connection. I'd be like, yo, it's a good day, you know? Yeah, man. Because that shit was rare. Yeah. And the fucking quality was amazing, bro. Amazing. The, the quality of what people were painting was amazing. Yeah, man. I sometimes feel like graph's gone a bit backwards. <sighs> yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, that's another debate, but it yeah, It is I another debate, you. you know, but it's like... I get everyone's doing their own thing, but but I just feel like I, I just look at stuff sometimes and I look at the way everything else has evolved. Music, even fucking breaking. You know mm. I mean? Look at the shit that they're doing now. Mm. And I kind of think Graph hasn't really excelled that far, really. There was a huge explosion of dimes and lumits and the Europe Euro style. I think Delta was way before all of them, but still I put them in the same bracket. When they crossed over, I think it woke up a lot of other heavier cities like London and New York. All of a sudden it's like, yo, what the fuck are they doing? What all these cans? All these colours? What? And they're doing these crazy, these crazy shit. That was definitely a wake up call, wasn't it? Yeah. I think a, a lot of my, my a lot of my favourite writers are from Germany. Yeah, 100%. There's some fucking amazing Bonkers. people out there, man. Yeah, it's a you know, but again, it's all what, I, you know, I can't say like, I'm not saying don't do this, don't do that. It's just my my opinion. I don't understand certain stuff. Why, do you know what I mean? But it's like... Or how it comes to that conclusion. Yeah, for but at the end reason, of the yeah. day, it, like, uh, you know, it mm. all goes down to whatever makes you happy again, doesn't it? Yeah, it's all about what makes you so happy. So if yeah. you're out there painting what makes you happy, that's what you're fucking doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the best bit about graph, isn't it? Yeah, It's man. in the eye of beholder. I yeah. say that to a lot of people that people message me asking me questions. But there's some people that's just starting out and stuff, and like the first thing I fucking tell them like is enjoy it. Mm. Because I fucking lost the enjoyment. When I was I was pushing so hard to be good that I was just fucking beating myself up. And you like, lost the journey of I, it all. I lost the happiness of it. It was like mm -hmm. I was like, right, we're painting a production wall. Um like, we're going to do these colours, do that colours. I like painting letters. That's my happy point. Mm. That, that's what I like doing. But because I can paint characters, I put myself on that duty. So, like, right, you paint a piece, you paint a piece. I'm going to do this fucking character. And I'm painting these stupid-ass fucking characters that are taking me two days to paint and shit. Not even enjoying oh, it, you. bro. Not even enjoying it. Just doing it for the greater good, mm. for the wall. And I can't regret that because it got... It got me to where I am, doing, mm. doing it, do you know what I mean? Mm -mm. It, but but I, it was fucking shit, <laughs> to be honest. Like, Big up all the character creators. Score, <laughs> Score is, a, is a wicked character designer, isn't he? Um, big up Bees as well. Um, fucking, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, put up this pot of like... Who's back going from, my, from ILC, yeah. man. He Yo, some sick serious, bro. <laughs> Yo, he's a bad man as well. Big up, big up that man. Uh... Yo, yeah, I mean, there's style for the finers everywhere. And a lot of them are out of London, man. Not, I mean, when you get into those outer areas, some of the fucking dons. There's some amazing, amazing... Sh Bristol, Brighton, Mate, you know what I mean? That's why I travel so much. Yeah. That's why I, tra that's why I travel too much. Why you said to me earlier, oh, you paint London much, I was like, no. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't know. It's because you recently painted uh, Trellick, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, he's down here. Must be down there a bit. Cause, you know, you don't just paint Trellick. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, of course, you were with Rian Pulse. Big up there, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we just came down to do that. And yeah. that was it. I was gone again. And then I was... You like travelling, don't you? you I like to it. get around, man. Yeah. yeah, I think, like, I do a lot of miles, brother. I went to, like, the other week, I was in Devon, and I went to Bristol on the way back. That's when I ended up painting with Goldie and, and uh, Dibs. Big up them as well. Oh, tight. That was a fun day, man. Golden dibs, man. Fuck, um, man. Just some, uh, just some icons. Oh, dude, man, that was just a fucking dope day with dope people. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's about, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And that, again, like meeting people, mm. new people. So then I went from there, I went up to, drove up to Scotland and did yard works. And that was the first time I met Tyler. 
Old tight ties. What a fucking dude, man. <laughs> dude. <laughs> what a dude. dude, uh, I, told dude him, I, said, I told him to his face, brother, he fucking, he made that weekend for me. Uh-huh. It's because he's a giggle. He's, he's fucking so joke. chilled. Yeah. yeah, man, he's the coolest guy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Top for tops. So, yeah, just travel, 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 paint, 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 as much as I can when I can, man. Which brings you down here with me. Yeah, which, <laughs> two years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, man. Yeah, the car didn't fail, you know what I mean? No lockdowns, no problems. That's how we roll. Brother, thank you so much for joining. It's all good, man. I hope I didn't, I didn't kill the mood a bit. Like. No, it was amazing. It was amazing for me, and I, and I know it was amazing for the guys out there. Um... If you're new and you're only just joining, all right? There's loads of other episodes, plenty of other graph writers and more to follow, all right? Stay locked on Yeah, there. I watched the Ingo one Yo, last hot. night yeah. and I clocked him on the way in, man. <laughs> I seen him up on the way in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, we only deal with the real, yeah. Trust me. Big up, Posier. Big up, man. Posier. Posier. <laughs> Posier? <laughs> my mama? Posier. Posier. Check the dossier. Go hit his Instagram, all right? We are like him was our fashion, all right, people? Do not talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Do not sleep on this. I repeat, do not sleep on my repeat, all right? Crime don't pay. Neither do they. Don't try this shit at home. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs>